At the conclusion of this presentation, participants should be able to define components of oral health in mechanically ventilated adults, recognize complications from poor oral health, promote good oral health through the delivery of appropriate oral hygiene, describe the state of the science regarding oral care practices in mechanically ventilated adults, assess and deliver evidence-based oral care, recognize triggers to consult other healthcare providers. In the past two decades, studies have demonstrated the link of poor oral health with cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, diabetes, stroke, and premature birth. Mechanically ventilated patients are vulnerable to systemic infections due to disruption in host defenses in mucociliary clearance, cytokine production, and salivary volume. They are completely dependent on healthcare providers to provide oral care during the duration of intubation and have the potential for bacterial load to be increased due to the lack of a consistent oral care regimen. Respiratory infections can be caused by anaerobic bacteria such as those that colonize the teeth of patients and individuals who cannot care for their own oral hygiene. When these bacteria mix with saliva, they can be aspirated into the lungs causing infection or pneumonia. Endotracheal tubes act as a reservoir and can carry this bacteria directly to the lungs as well. This oropharyngeal colonization with pathogenic organisms develops within the first 24 hours of intubation. Despite the link between oral health and systemic health and the dependence of intubated patients on healthcare providers to provide oral care, comprehensive oral care is often neglected. Possible reasons for the lack of an oral care regimen include the fact that nurses receive little or no formal training, there is a lack of priority for oral care over other seemingly more demanding tasks, there is a lack of a perceived need or time by the healthcare provider, the patient's inability to participate or request oral care is another factor associated with a lack of consistent regimen, the concept that medical conditions and equipment may interfere with oral care, the fear of endotracheal tube dislodgement, as well as a lack of published randomized controlled trials examining best practices for oral care in critically ill patients all contribute to inadequate delivery of oral care. Although there has been progress made in the prevention of ventilator-associated pneumonia, or VAP, it still remains a costly and frequent complication of mechanical ventilation. Oropharyngeal colonization plays a major role in the pathogenesis of VAP. The endotracheal tube allows a direct passageway for bacteria to enter the lungs and lower respiratory tract, causing infection. Ventilator-associated pneumonia is the most deadly hospital-acquired infection in patients in the intensive care unit. Mortality rate attributability of VAP is estimated at 8 to 15 percent. Other complications of poor oral hygiene in mechanically ventilated adults include increased dental plaque accumulation and oral inflammation, disruption of tissue integrity, further complication of pre-existing oral conditions. Although to date no gold standard oral care protocol with optimal frequency or products have been well established, several organizations have published recommendations to guide oral care of the mechanically ventilated patient. The Institute of Healthcare Improvement, IHI, the American Association of Critical Care Nurses, AACN, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CDC. The Institute for Healthcare Improvement recommends comprehensive oral care as part of VAP prevention protocols. This oral care includes daily oral care with 0.12 chlorhexidine. Antimicrobial products such as chlorhexidine mouth rinse offer supplemental benefits to brushing. These products alone without mechanical cleansing are insufficient to remove bacterial biofilm and prevent oral disease. A comprehensive oral care process that includes the use of 0.12% chlorhexidine oral rinse can be implemented and chlorhexidine can be scheduled as a medication, which will then provide a reminder for the RN and trigger oral care process delivery. 
The RN staff should be educated about the rationale supporting good oral hygiene and its potential benefit in reducing ventilator-associated pneumonia to ensure adoption of oral care regimens. The American Association of Critical Care Nurses recommend a comprehensive oral hygiene program for patients in critical care and acute care settings who are at high risk for ventilator-associated pneumonia to include brushing teeth, gums and tongue at least twice a day using a soft pediatric or adult toothbrush, providing oral moisturizing gels to oral mucosa and lips every two to four hours, use of an oral chlorhexidine gluconate 0.12% rinse twice a day during the perioperative period for adult patients who undergo cardiac surgery. At this time, the routine use of oral chlorhexidine gluconate 0.12% in other populations is not recommended by AACN. The CDC recommends the performance of regular oral care with an antiseptic solution, although the optimal frequency for oral care is unresolved, although oral studies have shown that bacterial biofilm should be removed daily. In delivering oral care to the intubated patient, healthcare providers should follow standard precautions and infection prevention procedures, including asepsis, gloves, a mask, and eye protection as needed. Obtain all necessary equipment prior to beginning oral care. Explain to the patient what you are planning to do so they are not startled, and note the position and placement of the endotracheal tube prior to oral care. Assessment of the intubated patient should mimic assessment of a healthy person and include all areas of the mouth for any signs of trauma, inflammation, bleeding, ulcerations or suppuration. Redness, swelling, exudate, tenderness and ulcerations are signs of infections that should be further assessed and referred as appropriate to dental professionals. Oral health status on admission to the hospital can be an indicator of pre-hospitalization oral health status. There may be slight bleeding of the gums if home care has been deficient. This bleeding will cease in a few days of adequate oral care. Xerostomia, or dry mouth, is common in intubated patients, and the lack of saliva can exacerbate the adherence of bacteria to the tooth surfaces, leading to inflammation and greater colonization. A water-based moisturizer should be used often to lubricate the patient's mouth. Prior to beginning the oral care protocol and immediately following oral care, it is important to suction the patient's mouth and the subglottic space in order to prevent aspiration of pooled secretions. Suctioning should be repeated as needed during oral care. A smear of sodium fluoride toothpaste should be used. Studies have shown sodium monofluorophosphate fluoride inhibits the action of chlorhexidine and should not be used with chlorhexidine. Although there are a few studies on the effects of tooth brushing in mechanically ventilated patients, current recommendations support brushing twice a day. A soft bristle toothbrush with a pediatric or small head should be used to allow access around the endotracheal tube. Powered toothbrushes have shown superior removal of dental plaque and may be used in the ICU on ventilated patients. Use a systematic sequence. Angle the bristles toward the gum line and brush with gentle pressure in small circular strokes on each tooth. The bristles of the toothbrush will extend underneath the gum line if adapted correctly. Facial surfaces of all maxillary teeth, then linguals, then repeat on the mandibular teeth. Brush the occlusal or biting chewing surfaces last with a scrub stroke. Brush the tongue with long outward sweeping strokes. Gently move the tube from side to side as necessary for access.
Using a sponge toothette soaked in an alcohol-free chlorhexidine gluconate, swab the buccal and labial mucosa, the gingiva, the tongue and palate. Swab the endotracheal tube as well since bacterial biofilm will form on it. Swabbing with this antimicrobial should be performed twice a day with no rinsing afterward for a minimum of 30 minutes. The mouth of an intubated patient should be kept as moist as possible. Every two hours, moisturize the lips, mucosa, tongue and corners of the mouth with a water-based moisturizer. Petroleum-based products should be avoided as they can dry tissues and are harmful if aspirated. Commonly substituted for a toothbrush, foam swabs or toothettes do not remove plaque bacteria or clean the teeth like a toothbrush and should not be substituted for toothbrushes. They are useful for the application of mouth rinses or lubricating agents. Hydrogen peroxide is acidic and can burn soft tissues if not diluted enough and may also cause black hairy tongue. Lemon glycerin swabs are very acidic and can cause soft tissue burns and demineralize the teeth. Petroleum based products are not recommended for moistening the lips and oral tissues as they are drying and harmful if aspirated. There are special considerations when delivering oral care in critically ill patients. Patients with traumatic brain injury, intracranial hemorrhage, hydrocephalus and other conditions that may affect intracranial pressure may require intracranial pressure monitoring during the procedure. Edentulous patients can harbor bacteria and their gums should be brushed gently at least twice a day. Teeth brushing may be difficult for patients with severe facial trauma and modifications should be made to brush the teeth based on the individual patient condition. Because mechanically ventilated patients are dependent on healthcare providers to provide all aspects of oral care for the duration of intubation, healthcare providers play a major role in good oral hygiene. Nurses should provide patient education about the procedure before, during and after the procedure. Nurses should also educate other nurses and healthcare providers regarding the importance of good oral hygiene in mechanically ventilated patients. Nurses should assess the oral cavity at least daily and consult the clinical provider as appropriate based on the findings. Oral care in mechanically ventilated adults is typically delivered by nurses and documentation of this care should be included in the medical record. Respiratory therapists generally replace or assist in the replacement of endotracheal tube holders and can be major contributors in assessment of the skin and mucous membranes under the securement device. Report and documentation of this assessment is important in optimizing communication between providers and improving patient care. Maintenance of a closed ventilation circuit is an important aspect in decreasing bacteria from entering the lower respiratory tract and causing infection. Assessment of the oral cavity and patient education regarding oral care treatment should be performed by the treating provider. A standard order for an antimicrobial rinse would assist in triggering oral care and the seamless delivery of oral care. The treating critical care clinician should collaborate and consult dental professionals as appropriate for oral health findings that may warrant additional assessment or treatment. Dentists and dental hygienists may be consulted on critically ill patients and follow-up or treatment may be warranted. The potential for proliferation of pathogenic bacteria and deterioration of oral health during intubation and the vulnerable nature of the critically ill patient mandates delivery of best practices to promote good oral health. This can only be achieved through interdisciplinary collaboration.